today when we were working with those young of the year. And you flip them over and you can see their veins. They're so small and see-through and they'll have an umbilical scar in between their pectoral fins on their underside. And that's how you can tell they've basically just been born. It's really exciting to know that there are large females out there that are still pupping um, and contributing to the population. The small tooth sawfish was uh, listed as endangered in the U.S. in 2003. The primary threats for listing the species were the, its bycatch, it was captured in commercial and recreational fisheries, and also secondarily it was the habitat loss that has occurred throughout the species range, which was historically from North Carolina down the coast to Texas, and currently now is uh, restricted to southwest Florida. As the species coordinator for small tooth sawfish, uh, my role is to help manage the species and determine what is necessary to conserve and recover the species. And the initial research that's ongoing for small tooth sawfish has been focused on juvenile small tooth sawfish. We've learned sawfish like shallow, muddy flats that are mangrove lined. So mostly we go out into the backcountry areas, which is areas in the backwaters, mud flats, mangrove lined habitat, relatively untouched. We set a net out across that mud flat and the sawfish swim right up into the net. And then we carefully remove the animal from the net. Usually it's entangled around its saw. We bring the animal to the boat. We have several measurements that we take, including saw length, pre-caudal fork and stretch total on the animal. We count the teeth on each side, the left and the right side of the animal to get a total tooth count. If it's a male, we measure the class birds inside and out. Um, we tag them externally with dart tags. We also have an internal pit tag. I tell people it's like what you tag your cat or your dog with. It just gives the animal a little barcode. And then we take a small thin clip for genetic sampling. We photograph the top of the animal and the bottom of the animal for um, identification purposes. And then uh, we release the animal back into the wild and it's, it swims away. Today was a really great day on the water. It's the beginning of March. We caught several just born young of the year sawfish in the same general location that we caught several age one animals. And the, the age ones that we caught today were actual recaptures from last year. Hey guys, it's a retag. Tag number is T0272. T0272. We've determined that these small juveniles and young of the year hang out in these certain sites. And we've also determined that the same mom will have pups at the same site every year. And we've also used the genetic analysis to determine that animals found on the same small mud flat are either full siblings or half siblings. So that makes these very specific sites very important for the species. In 2009, uh, NOAA Fisheries designated critical habitat for the small tooth sawfish. Critical habitat is what habitat that is needed to conserve and recover the species. And in order to designate critical habitat, we used all the available information that we had on the species to identify features that are important to the juvenile. And those features are red mangroves, their shallow water that's less than three feet in depth, and it's also a urihaline, a uh, fluctuating salinity habitat. I feel like it's, it's very important that we continue this research. We just finished up our first five years under our first endangered species permit. We were granted a second endangered species permit, so we've got another five years. We've learned so much in the first five years, site fidelity, the sibling stuff. We still need to focus on how much habitat these animals need as they grow in order to kind of balance out development and the habitat needs for an endangered species and one of the areas that we are just now starting to look at is on the adult small tooth sawfish life stage. We're just now starting to find where those adults are and just now starting to discover information on habitat use and prey and where they're breeding. Those are all types of questions that we still need to answer.